How's it going folks? Thought I'd do a bit of a quick tour around the garden uh, just to keep you guys updated on what's going on here in winter down in Australia. Um, I say quick but it's probably going to end up being a bit of a long one. Uh, they always are so bear with me. Um, just want to update you on a few things so here we go. Just got distracted by a couple of hoverflies on the dwarf lemon next to the camera there. Um, these guys are fantastic. They, they pollinate flowers. We've seen them all through the yard this uh, winter. We've seen them on the brassicas out the front, on the lemon. There's two on there now. Um, on weeds, um, yeah, marigolds. But anyway, back to the clip. Seedlings. We've got a few on the go here at the moment, mainly brassicas. I've got some touchstone beets and some kohlrabi, some seed that um, Tim sent me. Thank you very much, mate. They're all going well. Um, giant cauliflowers. These are ones that Nathan sent me. Um, these guys here, we only had two germinate uh, from the original planting I did. That's in a commercial potting mix. Uh, however, the ones I popped in our own um, compost and coir mix, they've all popped. I put two in every cell, or it looks like four in a couple, and they've all popped, so great germination rate on them. They've got to find somewhere out uh, to go in the yard once I get some true leaves like these guys. These guys will go out today, hopefully. I got some, um, uh, some heirloom broccoli, some waltham up the back here. I got two punnets of them, and I've got one punnet of the 60-day cauliflower. Whoops, I bent that one over. So we're going to have a whole heap more brassicas go into the yard. Down here we've got some lemongrass, um, this is the non-flowering variety, uh, they have a larger bulb for cooking so that's the one we like. Uh, the flowering variety, I think it's East Indian, is better for teas. This bulbing, the one with the larger bulb, goes a lot better in curries we think, a lot tastier. The lemongrass in the wicking barrel down the back, it got a fungal disease in the bulbs and that's pretty much all my fault for not thinning it out and not repotting it. So yeah, I thought I'd start with some new stuff we bought from the markets. Down the front here I have onions. So I've got a couple of trays of onions. These are just some seedlings I rescued from a um, hardware store and the roots are just starting to come through the base so these guys will go out into the patch. I really don't have a lot of luck with um, plant growing these guys from seed so I thought I'd have a crack with some pretty sad looking onions. What I did was basically transplant the small starts in here and I don't know if you can make it out. Just to give them a bit of a, um, a leg up I trimmed them all the way back so basically they had to throw out new leaves and it seems to have done the trick. So I've got some rather healthy looking ones in there. Next we have the pawpaw tree in the air pruning barrel. Um, someone actually asked how this was going. It's going fantastic. We only had one pawpaw on there for ages, finally harvested it. Um, wasn't the tastiest pawpaw and I think the reason why is this tree has grown so well and put on so much size and new leaves that it sucked all the life out of the barrel. So I pretty much all had been neglecting it. So. Now it's getting compost tea about twice a week. We're giving it uh, one watering can of compost tea and it's done the trick because up in here we have a load of flowers that have come on. We've got one fruit there that looks like it's taken. We have a couple of more flowers around here. One's just opened up there. Very, very pretty um, flowers and little fruits there. So this is a bisexual pawpaw by the way, so we don't need uh, male, female trees like a lot of other varieties. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the compost tea and the regular feed are, you, you know, gonna help this thing pick up and grow a little bit better. Down in here we have our potatoes. Oh, get the shadow away. A couple of potatoes. Um, there's some seed potatoes I bought. They're pretty much all ready to be topped up a bit, I think. Down here at Kangkong, we're trying to overwinter. There's a little bit of green there and some new shoots just popping over the back there. So hopefully he'll make it through. That's a little wicking bucket. Um, here we have our carrots. These are mixed heirlooms with some of um, Nathan's thrown in. Thanks, mate. Um, see how they'll go. Um, also, too, we've got a dill that's popped up out of nowhere. Always good to see a dill. And a um, Taggart's Minuta or Stinking Roger. And he was flowering and I had a little um, hoverfly on him earlier as well. The water chestnut bathtub, I'm pretty much will just let it dry out and we're just bandicooting. Um, <laughs> bandicoot's an animal here in Australia. Just means digging underground and grabbing out what we need when we need it. Um, just have a bit of a dig around down in here. There's a couple of um, chestnuts there. Little small ones. But I've been pretty much all just coming out and grabbing them as we need them for stir fries and curries. And they're, they're fine, they're just staying in the ground um, under, under cover. 
they're not rotting they're staying nice and firm um, they die off every winter and then pop back every spring when it starts to warm up again what I will be doing though is removing that kangkong uh, because I let the bed dry out the kangkong died off but that's no biggie um, I'm going to be removing that pot and harvesting pretty much well three quarters of the bed here put my hand into shot three quarters of the bed I'll just take all the water chestnuts out of and then put in some compost and revitalize the soil fill it up again for um, next spring and away we go some more water chestnuts will come through and hopefully we'll get them come through this side of the bed I'm just interested to see what's going to happen with the water chestnuts I leave up this end whether the corms grow bigger if they're left in for another year or yeah whether it's um, it's no point doing that so just a bit of an experiment on my part um, also too, we have one of these bottle brush trees has decided to self-seed itself in there. So we've got a massive tree up the side of the house that the lorikeets love to um, play in and feast on the flowers. So that one there is just a seed that's popped off from that tree and is growing in there. Um, I'm going to pop it in a pot because the tree up the side of the house is a little bit dangerous on a bad angle. So hopefully um, this one here will be able to replace it because those trees really do bring the parrots and the lorikeets into the yard so there's a bit of a look at that bed this little wicking barrel is doing very well it was topped up with compost we've got weed tomatoes popping out up through it it's got the bell chili in here we've still got a few fruit on i got two on there i'm leaving just to dry out so i'm going to collect the seed from those guys i ran out of bell chili seeds uh, sweet potato just keeps putting on new growth we've been able to harvest leaves uh, for salads and that sort of thing beautiful purple new growth so it'll be interesting to see what the tubers come out um, like from this one just in this wicking barrel here we have the loofah it's put on new growth we've got a new a new vine started up from the base i've got some sweet potatoes in there i really want to harvest but i think i'll just let it go now top it up with compost and let this loofah go we've been letting the loofahs dry out on the clothesline and i cleaned one up the other day and we've put it in the bathroom and may has claimed it as hers so we're getting some use out of the little um, the little pods. I've got one large one in the tree. It's still green, but as soon as it starts to die off a bit, go a little bit brown, I'll harvest him and let him dry out on the clothesline as well. Down here, I have my compost tea station. Um, what I do is I collect water from the aquaponics when I um, clean out filters. That's what's in this one at the moment. Um, I've had an algal issue and just cleaned out a um, trickle filter the other day. So what I've been doing is putting a little bit of commercial compost in there because we've run out of our own and giving things like the tomatoes and the brassicas a bit of a water uh, once a week with that. Uh, the potatoes up the side of the house, the seedlings, they've also been getting it. So I, th I think it's doing a good job for the plants. Um, I haven't had any complaints yet. This barrel here is my ginger barrel and I still haven't harvested my ginger. Um, it's still all nice and firm, it's not rotting in the barrel, it's not overly wet. Um, same thing as with the water chestnuts, I've just been coming down here and bandicooting out bits of ginger as we need it for cooking. Um, I will get around to it sometime soon and take the rest of it out. Um, these are just some feral mustard greens that have just popped up in here. These were being used to treat uh, nematodes around the garden. A couple have popped up and we've just been progressively picking leaves off of them for salads and that. The bed behind it there with the brassicas, that's just um, a couple of... Uh, broccoli and there's also mustard greens and um, marigolds all through there. Uh, broccoli with the root and not nematodes they're not really susceptible to them so pretty much all everything in that bed except for the feral tomatoes like this one here have a look at its roots no no nematodes can't see anything everything in there is pretty much all either nematode resistance or um, puts out a chemical when they decompose it kills a nematode so but the broccoli in there, it's doing rather well. Have a few nice heads forming on this one. Um, unfortunately, I think we're only going to get heads off of this crop here. They're the same as the other ones we had in the polyculture bed in the hoop house. The, I think they're an F1 variety. So we're not going to get many side shoots, if any. Uh, very disappointing because um, I rely on the side shoots coming through for our continual um, harvesting of broccoli. That's why I've planted out those heirlooms up the side of the house. So yeah, try and squeeze them in, see if we can get a bit of continual cropping going. Down in the hoop house, this is the polyculture bed. And as you can see, it's looking a bit bare. Uh, we've just left the broccoli in there. There's one broccoli left. Like I said, no side shoots. I think we got one side shoot off one of them. Very disappointing. Not going to buy seedlings again. I'll, I'll, I should have, you know, realised that I was doing the wrong thing, cheating. But anyway, um, the polyculture bed, 
We've just been using it as chook fodder mainly. Uh, we've been harvesting the lettuce, but as you can see, a lot of the lettuce is bolted. Uh, what that means is basically it's bolted to seed, um, starting to send up flower spikes. So we've been harvesting that lettuce there and giving it to the chickens. Meanwhile, our lettuce that we've been growing for two or three years now is not bolting at all. Um, that's what we call the coral lettuce, just there and down around that sick and sad looking jalapeno. We've just been continually harvesting that for all our salads and lunches and that sort of thing. It's been fantastic. There's a ladybug down in there. Let's see if we can zoom in. These are the lady beetles. They've been in here all season. Uh, we did have a bad aphid outbreak in the, at the start of the year. That's why we had the um, we got the lace wings in. Um, but the lace wings saw no mature adults. But we've seen loads of these ladybugs and also their larvae, the um, the little. I think they're called nymphs, ladybug nymphs as well, so really impressed with that. It means we've got a um, captive colony of insects in here that are, are taking care of the white fly and the, the aphids and that sort of thing, so yeah, mighty chuffed with that. So on the whole, I think this polyculture bed was a bit of a flop for us. All the garlic that I planted out down the middle basically got crowded out by the broccoli. The broccoli was just too large. Uh, the lettuce did really well. The radishes, we harvested them as they came through. These poor um, shallots, <laughs> these are Muggsy Jeff's red Chinese shallots, they just got smothered as well. They're hammered. There's a few weeds in there with them too, but they just got hammered, absolutely hammered. So <laughs> I'm going to feed this bed up again and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be naughty and I'm going to follow a brassica crop in here with another brassica crop. Some of those seedlings up the side of the house will go in here. I'll put some uh, fertilizer and some store-bought compost in here, uh, a particular brand we like. So try and revitalize the bed and then I'll just plant out a whole heap of cauliflower in here and also some of the onions on the um, on the northwest uh, facing side of the bed. So yeah, I, I know you're supposed to rotate your crops. A lot of people um, believe in that, but if I'm feeding up the soil, I think we should be right. Um, just having a real problem with the soils here at the moment. I've tried to do the right thing and make as much fertilizer on site as we can with the worm castings and compost. But seriously, the amount of food we grow in these beds, I'm think I'm going to have to buy in a bit of compost this season to see us through to summer. Hopefully with the two new compost cages going in that won't happen next year but for the last year or so I've really tried not to buy fertilizer and the plants have suffered for it I think this winter. Um, still some fairly good looking crops like that celery there is pretty impressive. The turmeric still going in there um, but yeah I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and buy some in. Um, in the other bed we've got the dinosaur kale or the um, Oh, black kale they call it, uh, Tuscan kale, also another celery there, it's looking rather good, we'll do a bit of a zoom in hey, got some celery that's starting to do really well, I found with the celery in the soil we're getting hollow stems, the celery we had in the aquaponics was nice and full and crunchy so I think um, aquaponics celery will be the way for us to go, but that kale is looking really good, we've harvested one or two complete plants of that. Um, got some fennel in there, um, Florence fennel. We harvested our first bulb the other night. It was massive, really, really impressive. It looked like a, a bit of head headgear or headdress. So um, we used it um, in the salad. Tasted fantastic in a green salad. Um, also um, used it in some sushi. Uh, Maya made up some um, some teriyaki chicken sushi rolls or rice paper or rice rolls with seaweed. Um, tasted fantastic in that. A couple of the cauliflower plants down the end of this bed got hit uh, by the white cabbage butterfly a bit. We've got a couple of um, there's one. We've got a couple of the oh squished them a bit. Um, cabbage butterfly caterpillars on there as you can see done a bit of damage. What happened is I had a tear in this netting and a couple got through here, laid a whole heap of eggs, but I'm pulling them off as I find them and giving them to the chooks. It's not too bad, I suppose. Um, easy way to tell that you've got them is you get the telltale little um, scats or droppings that they leave on the leaves, but I mean, that head looks all right. Um, this one here, I think, will be the first one off, so he's coming up nice. Uh, I'd say he'll be coming off tomorrow or the day after, so these collies are all right. These, again, are from a... Um, hardware store so I won't be saving any seeds from these guys. Over the back here we've still got some um, basil going um, just hanging in there some sweet basil so those plants might make it through. This is one of my favorite parts of the garden at the moment we have all this lush warrigal greens that we've just been harvesting repetitively. 
I've got my first crop of Wombok cabbage. This is the big Chinese cylindrical cabbage. I love this stuff in salads. Um, we've got two or three heads in there that will be harvested very, very soon. They're starting to get a nice bit of size to them. And I have some more cauliflower over the back here. These guys here are from a hardware store as well. So, yeah, I might be saving seeds from these guys. They can, you know, once they form heads, I'll pull them out and they'll become um, clucker tucker. Some food for the chooks. The mouse melons are still doing all right. We're harvesting fruit every now and then for salads. I'm not trying to pick it too heavily so we can let the fruit last. I've found that the uh, female flowers are dropping off. Um, we're still getting male flowers, but I think it's just the chill factor. But that's all right. I've been told that this vine will bounce back nicely next season. So a couple of green onions in there as well. This is the glass gem corn bed. And as you can see, I must have dropped a um, cob there because we've got a whole heap sprouted. Got a purple osaka mustard coming through and a couple of lettuce and tomato and some sweet potato. So this bed's just had a rest pretty much all, all of winter. Um, and I'm going to pop some, some of those brassicas, probably the kohlrabi will go into here. So just thought I'd give the bed a bit of a rest. It got fed up with some scrapings from the chook yard and also some compost and bits and pieces. So it should be ready to um, have a next crop go through. We've let the galangal be over winter as well. I've just been bandicooting rhizomes as we need them for curry. I've also got a um, surprise plant growing out of the um, Gallingal bed. Uh, it's a Cape Gooseberry or Ground Cherry. Um, it's got some nice nice fruit setting down in here so really pleased with that. Normally this stuff gets um, uh, attracts the Colorado potato beetle here and we lose most of the plants. They just get decimated but this one seems to have escaped their attention for now so I'll give him a bit of a spray with some neem and hopefully we won't have any issues. So there you go. There's a little bit of a uh, long quick look at how the garden's going at the moment. Sorry about that. Try to keep the clips under 13 minutes but I know this one's going to go way over that probably. Um, so thanks if you've stuck with me. Um, the, the, the soil beds, um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and buy a bit of compost. Um, it's just, I need, I think I've overstretched myself basically. I don't have enough resources to continually feed these wicking beds up all the time. Um, that's one of the reasons we're sort of getting a little bit into the aquaponics a little bit more with, um, having some more grow, um, beds there. Uh, just to keep certain crops through, um, going through all the time that is, the leafy greens and celeries and things like that. Uh, for those guys interested in the aquaponics, I'm managing to do one or two seals a week at the moment. I'm just tied up uh, helping the kids and other bits and pieces that have cropped up. So hopefully I'll get to hook into that well and truly this coming weekend. Um, what else? Um, I think that's pretty much all it. Um, yeah, rather chuffed with the way the garden's going. Hopefully, well I rambled on so long the battery went flat. I've done a 50 minute clip so far, so I'm going to try and cut it down guys so I don't have to put you through that. Um, but I will do try and do a little bit of a clip just showing you the yak on the turmeric and the ginger harvest because people have asked me about them so I'll just do a small little clip with all three of them in together. Um, also too, the giveaways, sneaky giveaways, I'm going off again, sneaky giveaways. I gave away some um, mouse melon seeds and also some vouchers to celebrate the 25,000 subscribers. Thanks guys. Um, so I've sent off the emails. If you could respond to me, uh, respond to those emails, that'd be fantastic and I'll organize your seeds and your gift vouchers. Seeds will take a while yet because they're still fermenting and getting ready, but they're the gift vouchers I'll try and shoot off straight away. Um, so I will leave it there. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, pop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope everyone has an absolutely fantastic one and I shall catch you later. Cheers all.